If you can break a crystal down into its constituent shapes, you can actually start spotting the patterns that tell you what crystal system they're from. So even if you don't know what a particular mineral is, you can start putting it together and going, oh, well that should be this crystal because I see this, this, and this. Everybody always told me growing up I look just like my mom, but that's probably just because we have brown hair, brown eyes, and darker skin. As far as like our face shape and everything, I look like my dad's side of the family. So he has more of a rounder shape. He's, he's Scotch Irish. I'm basically daddy's girl. Like our personalities are like extremely similar. I may be more goofy than he is, but like my mom is super type A and me and my dad are not at all. So I got told we're doing crystal systems. So there's a hint. Think beyond the box. It's a box. <laughs> okay, so that's it. Um, okay, nothing's in it. So we have a box in a box, and so is my hint beyond the box. So if I had to guess, this box is my hint for tetragonal. And that may that may seem really like out of left field, but if you take a box, which is cubic which I'm sorry guys, we don't have a perfectly square box, but you know, such is life. So if you take your cube and you stretch it out, you get tetragonal. Basically the only thing that is different from cubic, your A and B axis are still the same, they're still equal, and then your C axis, you stretch it or you shorten it. Let's look at our clue. We may look different, but can you spot our family traits? So these are all tetragonal and of course they all look actually really different. This is Cassiterite. He looks funky. This looks like it's a twin. So we actually have a modified crystal and a twin plane right there where that V is. And then we have another twin right here. So this is actually a really neat little twinned Cassiterite crystal, which is pretty cool. And yes, these are all tetragonal. And then this is a hydroxy apophyllite. If you guys notice, it looks very square. And then you have these like angled edges on it. And this technically it's fluoropophyllite, but most everybody in the trade just calls it apophyllite. So this one is obviously a much bigger, much more prismatic crystal. This is basically like the most apophyllite apophyllite that you can possibly get your hands on. If somebody were to, from memory, identify an apophyllite, it would be this shape. So we're gonna break these down and show you guys how they are actually tetragonal. So first, what is the tetragonal prism? What is its base rectangle look like? So on the top and bottom, you're gonna have a cube. Of course, since I'm trying to draw it in 3D, it doesn't really work to make it equal. So you have squares on top and bottom, and then it's gonna have either a long or a short side. So basically, this short side and this long side are both C. We usually call this like the crystallographic axis. So you basically get a rectangle with this guy. He's got a pointy top. So we are going to have a tetragonal pyramid. It's gonna be a cube with you know, a different length to that point up at the top. Unlike with diamonds where they are called bipyramidal, when you have two pyramids for the tetragonal system, it is called dipyramidal. And then you can also have things that look like a two pyramids stuck together, but instead of being equal from here to here, does not equal this length right here. So it's just a little bit different. With some of our other shapes, like our hydroxy apophyllite, one part of it looks pretty cubic, but it's not. We actually have two pyramids, and pyramids are really hard to draw, guys. When you see that angle, so you guys see how it's not flat. Well, so that angle tells me that I have something going on. I actually have two pyramids put together. Well, but you say, okay, it's flat on the top, so why is it flat? What we have here is a paired flat surface. A paired flat surface in the crystallography kingdom is called a pinacoid. Well, these pinacoids sit right on top and they actually make our crystal flat. Essentially, you now have a box with angled sides and flat top and bottom. 
So that's how you kind of break that shape down to get to our hydroxyapophyllite. So those were just a few of the many shapes that tetragonal crystals can come in. I'm gonna show you guys how you can tell the difference between some of those shapes and other shapes that you see in other crystal systems. Spot the imposter. Which of these gems doesn't belong in this episode? Okay, so I've got four specimens here, and obviously I have to figure out which of these are not tetragonal. So let's go with the obvious. This guy has six sides. So that really does not happen like that in the tetragonal crystal system. Six sides gives me a really good hint that this is in fact part of the trigonal or hexagonal crystal system. Trigonal would be multiples of three and tetragonal is going to be multiples of four. This is a quartz crystal. All right, so we separated out our easy one. Now we are to our crystals that are multiples of four. How do we tell the difference? Well, let's go with the obvious one because this one, you guys are going to be seeing your prism right here. So this can't be cubic because we actually have a long C axis right here. We can see that we have the general shape of our pyramid on top and then our prism right here. And that pretty much tells us it is tetragonal. A classic mineral that has this shape is actually zircon. So we've got our tetragonal zircon crystal. And here we have another almost complete cube across the top, but it's got this really interesting kind of like an arch to the middle of it. So that does not look like this. So what's going on here? We've actually got two pyramids that are competing for the same top and bottom space, and we have a flat prism right here in the middle. I learned the hard way that some diamonds can actually look really similar when they have something called X solution on them. X solution is where you actually have reabsorption of a crystal, basically something's going on and the outside of the crystal is being kind of eaten away. You can actually get like a, an almost flat side like on the edges of their crystals. On my practice test when I was taking my Gym A lab class, I actually missed it. I identified a zircon as a diamond because I thought that that center prism was actually X solution edging on the diamond. And I'd never seen a zircon that had that little bitty of a prism face, so it was, it was actually pretty annoying. But here, if you guys can see that there's like barely an angle change, it's really hard to see. But there's actually another line right here and right here. And that's a second set of pyramids. And then we have our prism right in the middle, which is kind of weird, kind of cool. And then we have our little guy right here. So this has no edging, no nothing, and is really, as far as nature goes, very equant. And with that amount of luster, I would be really hard pressed to come to any other conclusion other than this is actually, in fact, a diamond. And it belongs to a different crystal system, namely the cubic crystal system. You have those two pyramids stuck together and there's nothing in between them. And then you have different separations right in the middle of this zircon crystal. And that is one way that you can tell the difference between diamonds and zircons. Okay, we're still playing spot the imposter. So, alrighty, let's see. You guys just wanna mess with me today and bring back memories of me taking tests. Obviously, we've got two different crystals here. And again, one of these is tetragonal and one of these belongs to a different crystal system. We've got to figure out how to spot some of the important differences between them. With the trigonal and hexagonal crystal system, you can have a hexagonal prism. Well, you can also have trigonal prism. One is three-sided, the other is six-sided. This is actually two trigonal prisms that so makes this crystal look very rounded. So we have seen that this is not a tetragonal crystal. But this little guy gave me fits on one of my tests. This species of mineral, which is called scapolite, can actually have a lot of the same colors. They can have striations on the outside. And what's crazy about scapolite is that you can have as many as I think five tetragonal prisms just basically having the tiniest, tiny little crystal faces and that are basically covered up 
with their striations on them. You get this like really crazy looking circle that just has some barely flat lines the whole way around it. When I was taking my actual test for Gem A, they gave us a crystal. It had no terminations and it had striations on it. Basically, the only way you could see the crystal shape was looking straight down that long axis. So am I looking at a rounded tetragonal shape or am I looking at a really just destroyed trigonal hexagonal prism. Eventually, I settled on the fact that it was in fact scapolite. And it was all thanks to those really chattery looking multiples of four. So real life experience in that front, last box. So let's see what's inside. Oh, okay. Yes, some crystals colors are very indicative of what they are, but pretend with me, they're all the same color. <laughs> so we have in front of us, three different minerals. We have some very boxy looking crystals here. And of course, one of them is fluorite. With the name printed on the top, I guess I can't really play spot the imposter, at least with that crystal. But it's an old piece and we do not want to remove it from its base because it could actually break the crystal. Fluorite is cubic. It's one of the most famous cubic minerals other than diamond. So here we have a really cool wolfenite from Mexico. And as you guys can see, it looks very square right on the top. And then right here on the side of that same crystal, you can tell that this is actually a squatted down cube. So that is where our C axis changed its length. When you are looking at minerals to tell the difference of whether or not it is cubic or tetragonal, you can have very, very, very close to the same length, but just not exactly the same length on that C axis. And it may not be perfect cubes across the top, and a lot of times that just has to do with how mother nature played out. So like here, this top of this crystal grew into the rock, so it had to stop. But if you see others on here, you get a really good idea that they have a cube on the top and then you have that short squat side. Then we've got our apophyllite. This one really does look very boxy on some of these small crystals. So like this smaller crystal right here and then that guy right there. And this one, you can see some of his edges. They are really, really close to being cubic. So you kind of have to sit here and look around on this crystal. So when you look at these bigger ones, they look like rectangles. So here, this is actually the side of a crystal. And then this is the termination on this end and on this end. They're still rectangular. And that tells us that they are not cubic. And then we're on to our little cubic guy. And you say, but Elizabeth, none of these are actually cubes. So how do you tell the difference? It is complete on the back, which means that it is not broken or wasn't like broken off the rock, but it does have X solution all over the back. So we know that they are missing parts of their cube. And so it's not like it just stopped like with these guys, it kind of got eaten away. But when you look at this crystal, here on the side, it is almost an absolute perfect cube. And another cool thing about fluorite is if you look at their surfaces, you can see little tiny cubes on them too. And that is also another hint that we have cubic crystals. So I hope that you guys have started to see where you can use crystal shapes to help you identify different minerals and different crystal systems. Before we go, I want you guys to take a closer look at this gorgeous apophyllite and those beautiful tetragonal prisms. Here's your hint for our next crystal systems video. So you know how I said this was a twinned cassiterite? Well, this is actually a very famous twinned crystal and it belongs to our next crystal system that we will explore. If you've got a guess, let us know in the comments and while you're there, don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell. Thanks for watching.